Episode 4, Unboxing Hat Boxes. Hey friends, today we're going to look through what's in this hat box. It has It has a logo on the top that says L.A. Schulman. L.A. Schulman was a high-end department store in White Plains, New York. And it operated from the 1920s through the 1970s. Now, I don't know that what's in this hat box is what was originally in it when it was bought at L.A. Schulman. I don't even know how I came into possession of this hat box. It's possible that I bought it at an antique store or a yard sale or a junk shop or an estate sale. It's possible that it was donated to the theater that I work at, Playmakers Repertory Company. And every so often we go through our costume and prop storage and thin out things that we have too many of, that we'd rather have the space than the things. And hat boxes are often culled from our permanent stock. And when our prop department decides that they have enough hat boxes, then they put together the ones that they want to deaccession. And I offer them to my millinery students. Sometimes I take them. I offer them to local milliners who might want to use them to store things in their own studios. So it's possible that this was part of a donation that was then subsequently deaccessioned to millinery class or to me as the teacher of millinery class. But none of that tells us what's inside of here. So let's open it and see. Ah, uh, these are good hats. There's two hats in here. This is so exciting. I should maybe take this hat off of Zelda. You may have seen me working on this hat if you attended or subsequently watched the live stream this week of Open Studio Time. This was the October 1st one in which I began trimming out this hat for donation to a charity auction. But since I have hats in this box, I'd like to, to have Zelda model them for us. Well, I could too, I guess. This is the first one. This little black straw hat was made by a former student and a good friend of mine and a woman who actually attended that live stream I was talking about on the first. Kim Fraser of Hat Nip Hats. And this hat, I like to wear it like this. Let me, oh, I'm sticking on my hair clip here. Put it on Zelda too. Oh, it may not fit on her because she has such a slippery head. It will have to just balance precariously on her. Kim took my millinery class after having taken several weekend and week long workshops in millinery construction. She lives here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and was looking for a longer deep dive into various millinery techniques and approached the class from a couturier sensibility as opposed to most of my students are going into theatrical costume production. So it was very exciting to have her perspective in class. And it was in the time when she was ramping up to launch uh, her business. She has an Etsy shop and she's a member of the Orange County Artists Guild. This hat was in that original first collection in her Etsy shop and I saw it and I loved the shape of it. I just love how it's got this tiny little crown 
and this lovely swoop to the brim with this vintage metallic ribbon on there. So I bought it. The other hat in here is also made by Kim Hatnip Hats. And it is this beautiful teal felt freeform construction with this lovely spray of iridescent black rooster feathers on it. And this is one that I won't say Kim and I disagree about hats per se, but often, especially with her own designs, the way that the label indicates she intends them to be worn is the opposite of how I am automatically drawn to wear them. So this hat is one that according to the positioning of the label here is supposed to be worn like this. Oh, I'm falling into trouble with this hair clip again. Um, It's supposed to be worn like this, which this is fine. Um, but when I saw it just sitting on the table and I think she was displaying her first collection when we did My Fair Lady, we had a milliner's tea party for benefactors and donors to the theater and she exhibited that collection of hats. It was a great time. Everybody tried on hats and drank tea and ate finger sandwiches. But I saw it sitting on the table in that presentation of her work and I picked it up and put it on like this, which is totally backwards from how she meant for it to be worn. Oh wait, actually, I think I, I, think I tilted it. Yeah, I tilted it like this, which I've worn it to opening nights like this before. I totally love this hat. Um, and Kim gave this hat to me as a gift and it is much loved by me. If you look at it closely, you can see that it was a, a band of a capoline about three inches, four inches wide. She has sized it a little bit. It's got some stiffening to the shape of it. And then hand formed curls and swoops into it. This is a beautiful hat. So this box was a fun trip down memory lane for me in reference to a former student who is now a very successful millinery artist here in Chapel Hill. Thank you for watching another installment of Unboxing Hat Boxes, and I'll see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, and join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern for a live open studio stream.